In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. Well, good morning to you all. Welcome to our Eucharist today. Uh, today, in the Church's calendar, we give thanks for the life and witness of St. Gregory the Great, Pope and Teacher of the Faith. Gregory was born in the year 540, the son of a Roman senator. As a young man, he pursued a government career and in 573 was made prefect of the city of Rome. Following the death of his father, he resigned his office, sold his inheritance and became a monk. In 579, he was sent by the Pope to Constantinople to be his representative to the Patriarch. He returned to Rome in 586 and was himself elected Pope in the year 590. At a time of political turmoil, Gregory proved an astute administrator and diplomat, securing peace with the Lombards. He initiated the mission to England, sending Augustine and 40 monks from his own monastery to refound the English church. As Pope, he styled himself servant of the servants of God, a title which typified both his personality and ministry. He died in the year 604. And so we give thanks today in our Eucharist for St Gregory, and we offer our Mass with special intention for the current Pope and Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis, asking God's blessing upon his ministry. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you, no secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My friends, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the holy mysteries of Christ's body and blood, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, who chose your Bishop Gregory to be a servant of the servants of God, grant that, like him, we may ever long to serve you by proclaiming your gospel to the nations and may ever rejoice to sing your praises. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours whether Paul or Apollos or Kephas 
or the world or life or death or the present or the future all belong to you and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God the response to the psalm is the earth is the Lord's and all who dwell therein the earth is the Lord's and all who dwell therein the earth is the Lord's and all that fills it the compass of the world and all who dwell therein for he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep the earth is the Lord's and all who dwell therein who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who can rise up in his holy place those who have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up their soul to an idol nor sworn an oath to a lie the earth is the Lord's and all who dwell therein they shall receive a blessing from the Lord a just reward from the God of their salvation such is the company of those who seek him of those who seek your face O God of Jacob the earth is the Lord's and all who dwell therein the Lord be on my heart and on my lips I am worthy to proclaim his holy gospel amen the Lord be with you listen to the gospel of Christ according to st. Luke once while Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets he got into one of the boats the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little way from the shore then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat when he had finished speaking he said to Simon put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch Simon answered master we have worked all night long but have caught nothing yet if you say so I will let down the nets when they had done this they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink but when Simon Peter saw it he fell down at Jesus his knees saying go away from me Lord for I am a sinful man for he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken and so also were James and John sons of Zebedee who were partners with Simon then Jesus said to Simon do not be afraid from now on you will be catching people when they had brought their boats to shore they left everything and followed him this is the gospel of the Lord praise to you O Christ please be seated now here's a question for you uh, do you think that it's better to be wise or to be foolish is it better to be wise or to be foolish it sounds like an obvious question to answer obviously it's better to be wise and do the things that are sensible in life and in the world uh, so for example on a day like today I suppose you might say it's a wise thing to come out uh, with a coat on and carrying an umbrella it will be a foolish thing to do to be in shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops and we might think that the Bible encourages us to be wise uh, for example there's the parable Jesus tells of the wise man who built his house upon the rock I'm sure you know the story and the rains came and the house stood strong the foolish man built his ha house on sand and when the rains came uh, the house was washed away and there's also the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins who are there waiting uh, for the wedding banquet to come waiting for the groom to arrive and the foolish virgins haven't got any spare oil so when their lamps burn down they have to go off and buy some and in the meantime 
the groom comes, the wise virgins who've got the spare oil are allowed into the wedding feast. So there are these references in scripture to being wise as opposed to being foolish. But then in our first reading today from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul seems to turn that advice on its head. And there's a sentence in here which might seem quite contradictory when we read it for the first time. He says this, if you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. If you think you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. What does that mean? How can that be? You should become fools so that you should become wise. Aren't the two things opposite? How can one lead to the other? Well, I think in order to understand what Paul is talking about, we need to know a little more about the background of Corinth. And you might remember last Thursday I introduced Corinth, the city in southern Greece to which Paul is writing. And last week we had the very opening of his first letter to the Corinthians. Um, today we've only got as far as chapter 3. I think there are about 15 chapters, so we've got a long way to go yet. But it's a good letter to study. And last week I said that Corinth was this very cosmopolitan city sitting at the crossroads of east and west. Many traders passed through. It was subject to many influences. Many people came from different parts of the world and brought with them all sorts of different philosophies and ideas and customs and traditions. And the Christian church particularly was having a tough time keeping its identity amongst all these competing ideas and influences that were present in the city. And one of the influences that was there was that of philosophy. Philosophy, of course, was very important for the Greeks. Think of Plato and Aristotle, who hailed from Greece. And for the Corinthians and for many people in Greece, uh, what they valued more than anything else was people who were steeped in learning, people who were clever um, and people who could speak well in public public speakers, debaters, orators, they loved to listen to, lawyers and other people who were full of wisdom, so they called it. Wisdom for the Corinthians meant book learning, knowledge, philosophy, and they prized that as the most important thing. And if you had all of those things, if you were a good public speaker, if you were knowledgeable, if you were steeped in philosophy, then you were an important person in Corinth. And it seems to me that what was going on was that the members of the Corinthian church themselves were striving to be like these people they admired, the philosophers, the orators, the debaters. And they thought that if you had lots and lots of knowledge and could speak eloquently, somehow that made you a better Christian. And one of the other things that was going on in Corinth was there was different factions. And there's a reference to that in the passage. Paul, Apollos, Kephas, the different leaders of the church. And some Christians liked Paul. They liked the way he spoke. Some preferred Apollos. They thought he was the better speaker, cleverer, more learned. Some Kephas, which is the Greek name for Peter, the apostle. And what Paul is trying to say to them is that in actual fact, when it comes to the Christian faith, knowledge and learning and philosophy isn't so important. Now, that's not to say it's of no importance, because of course we need sometimes to study the scriptures, we need to gain knowledge about God and his ways. But Paul is saying this is not the be all and end all. Wisdom, as the Corinthians would have considered it, is not, Paul is saying, the most important thing. You should become fools, that you may become wise. In other words, he's saying, put all of that learning, all of that cleverness to one side and just accept God, accept the grace that he offers, reach out 
in faith. Because, you know, the great thing is that that's something anybody can do. Whether you're clever and knowledgeable and academic or whether you're not, it doesn't matter. Everyone's on an equal footing before God because everyone can have faith. And now sometimes having faith, the outside world might see as foolishness. Foolishness, perhaps, to spend our Thursday mornings here in church, other people might say. God himself might appear foolish. Why send your only son into the world, your precious only son, into this crazy and dangerous world? What a foolish thing to do. What a foolish thing for Jesus himself to allow himself to be executed upon a cross in the most violent and gruesome way. All these things appear perhaps to the world as foolishness, but we know they're acts of love. And love in a way is foolishness, isn't it? If you declare your undying love for somebody, it's maybe a foolish thing to do because they might reject you. If you bring another human being into the world, you might say that's a foolish thing to do because of the risk, because of the heartache, because of the effort that goes with it. But we know there's a different side to all of those things. That actually, having love and showing love, yes, it might be foolish, yes, it might be risky, but the rewards are amazing. And so too, it may have been foolish for God to send his son into the world. It may have been foolish for Jesus to allow himself to be crucified but we know the outcome that the outcome is eternal life and things have been turned on their head and we see another example of foolishness maybe in the gospel reading today Jesus who after all is a carpenter not really an expert in fishing says to the professional fishermen you know why don't you go out uh, cast your net into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. It seems foolish to these fishermen because the best time to go and catch fish is in the middle of the night and they've spent all night fishing and caught nothing and here's this Jesus telling them to let down their nets, a foolish thing to do and yet we know what happens. They bring in so many fish that the nets were beginning to break. And then afterwards Jesus says to them, from now on they will be catching people. And Simon and James and John leave everything and follow Jesus. Again, what a foolish thing to do, to leave their business, to leave their livelihood, to leave everything they know and follow him. But again, we know the outcome. that They became the apostles on whom the church was founded. And so sometimes, perhaps, doing the foolish thing, as the world would see it, is not such a bad thing after all. To set aside so-called wisdom, learning, philosophy, cleverness, is also not a bad thing after all. God reaches out to us in love. And let us have the courage to reach out in love and in foolishness to the world and to one another. Amen. Gwedhyun, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you've promised to hear us when we pray in faith. Today we give you thanks for the life of Saint Gregory. We pray for your blessing upon Pope Francis and for all other leaders of the churches. Remembering too, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, John, Archbishop of Wales, and June, Bishop of this diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worldwide church and today especially for the Diocese of Ogbomoso in Nigeria, the Diocese of Caledonia in Canada and Calgary in Canada and their bishops and people. 
And in our own diocese today, we're asked to pray for the parish of St. Mary's Cardiff, for Dean Atkins, the parish priest, for the staff and pupils of St. Mary's Church Primary School. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for peace and justice among all the nations. We continue to hold in our prayers all those affected by coronavirus, especially in those parts of our world where there is war or natural disaster or other problems compounding the effects of coronavirus. We pray for our local schools as pupils return today that they will be kept safe. And within our parish today we pray for all who live in David Street, Plas David, Myrion Street and Gadlis Ichav. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we hold before you, O Lord, those who are ill at this time in body, mind or spirit. We give you thanks for those who have gone before us, both those who have died recently and those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, and pray for all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. We are all citizens with the saints and the household of faith, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
mystery of this water and wine, we come to the video craft of himself to show our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. We celebrate this feast in thanksgiving for your servant, St Gregory. You inspire us by his care and love, instruct us by his teaching, and encourage us by his example. As one who cares for your flock. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise. These gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. Grant that these gifts of your body and blood may cleanse me from my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful always to your teaching and let me never be parted from you. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. We thank you, Father, for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son in this holy sacrament, through which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of his body, the Church, and send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.